Welcome back and welcome if this is your first time here. Today I have some exciting tips for you when it comes to painting water. Water is one of my favorite subjects to paint and I'm gonna take a look at one of my paintings that I did recently and I'm gonna give you the three essentials to painting water in watercolor. So let's take a look. I have a free gift for you. Watercolor is not a very forgiving medium. It's hard to correct. So having a plan from the beginning is crucial. That's why I created this free video lesson, Seven Secrets of Fresh Powerful Painting. I give you seven powerful tips that will help you plan your painting, mindfully paint your scene, and most importantly, know when you are done and avoid overworking. Many students have already watched this video lesson and are seeing great results, and I know that it can help you out as well. All you have to do is follow the link in the description down below, and you can start painting more fresh and powerful paintings. All right, back to the video. Water scenes are one of my favorite subjects to paint. I recently was able to take a trip to a lake with my family, and I did a little bit of plein air painting, and I wanted to repaint the scene in the studio. This is the painting I created once I came home and tried the subject in the studio. So let's talk about the three things we want to keep in mind when we're painting water scenes. And the first thing is we want to have proper perspective in our scene. And this applies to painting skies or painting the water as well. Let's talk about perspective for a minute. So in that painting, we had some trees over here, we had a horizon line here on this lower third. And then we had clouds here, we had water down here. And one thing we want to keep in mind, and this applies if we're painting clouds or if we're painting water, is proper perspective. So as lines or shapes get closer to the horizon line, they are going to be narrower. And as they move up towards the sky or down towards the foreground, they want to get wider. So let's put a cloud up here. So this shape here is a cloud. Well, if we have more clouds near the horizon, there are more clouds. As these clouds get closer to the horizon, the lines are closer together. So the bottoms of the clouds, there are more lines near the horizon. And as they get closer to the top, they're further apart. And the same thing goes for when we are painting the waves in the water, any lines down here, they are narrower near the horizon, and as they get closer to us, they are wider. So right there you can see how we are creating a sense of distance. Narrower lines near the horizon, wider lines near the foreground and the top. So you can see on this painting, the larger clouds are up here. As I get near the horizon, those lines are thinner and thinner. And the same thing goes for these lines in the water. So these little ripples I have, they get further apart as they get near the foreground. Even though we're not drawing complex buildings or cars or a street scene, we still wanna keep perspective in mind when we're painting a water scene as well. Important lesson number two, we want to ensure that this horizon line is flat. If this line isn't flat, if it's crooked, if it juts out in the wrong way, it really completely destroys this illusion of distance. Because a lot like our perspective lines, how they're narrower together, the lines in the distance need to be even more flat. And then as the shore comes closer to us, you might see a little bit of, of change in that line, but we wanna keep all of those distant lines flat. And if that horizon line isn't flat, it's gonna make our painting feel unsettled. So keep your horizon line flat. Another important thing that we wanna think about when we are painting water is that as we get near the foreground of our scene, we wanna keep getting darker and darker and darker because it's that strength in the painting, that darkness, that will draw our eye into the important part of the scene. And the same thing happens with the sky. If you look at a sky, the deepest, richest blue part of the sky is at the top. And as we work our way down 
it's becoming a lighter blue color. So we're almost creating a vignette in our paintings. We want it to be darker near the top of our painting and near the bottom of our painting to keep our viewer's eye in the middle ground where the important things are happening. This is very important when you're painting your first wash in this scene. The water is lighter, and as we move down, you wanna keep getting darker and darker and darker until you get to the bottom of the painting. Another reason we want to exaggerate the strength in the water when we paint is, in this first part of our wash, I've wet down my paper, just getting it evenly damp all across the paper. I'm using a large brush that has a lot of water on it. What happens in watercolor is the more drying that happens, the more fading that happens. Because there's a lot of water, there's a lot of drying that's gonna take place. So we wanna keep that in mind as we're painting the scene. You wanna paint a little bit darker than you think you need to. If it looks right when you paint it, it's gonna be a little too light once it dries. So you wanna compensate for that, especially when you're creating the strength at the bottom of your painting. So those are my three tips to keep in mind when it comes to painting water. We want to be mindful of our perspective, make sure that our lines are narrower near the horizon and they're getting further apart from each other as we move up the sky and as we move to the foreground. We wanna ensure that our horizon line is flat and be mindful of that to bring stability to our scene. And we want to really darken up our painting at the bottom to lead the viewer's eye into the scene and we want to compensate for drying so paint a little stronger than you think that you need to so the next time that you're painting a water scene keep these three tips in mind and before you go don't forget i have a free video lesson for you seven secrets of fresh powerful painting i give you seven powerful tips that will help you plan your painting, mindfully paint your scene, and most importantly, know when you are done and avoid overworking. Many students have already watched this video lesson and are seeing great results, and I know that it can help you out as well. All you have to do is follow the link in the description down below, and you can start painting more fresh and powerful paintings. If there's something that you'd like me to make a video about, leave that in a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So keep practicing, keep moving forward in your learning, and I will see you next time.